Good morning. Welcome back to White Mountains Today and welcome to the uh, White Birch Books Corner right here on White Mountains Today. And joining us right here is Laura Cummings from White Birch Books. How are you, Laura? I'm good. Good morning. I'm not usually here on a Sunday. I know. It's, it's a uh, different world out there. It throws off everybody <laughs> this morning. So, uh, But uh, we're going to get through. We are. Get through, we are. So. It's just a little quieter on a Sunday morning. It is. It is. So. Uh, but uh, we'll, we'll make it noisier in a little while. Yeah. So um, books, you got them. You, We've uh, got books. I mean, that's what, you know, we're a bookstore. So, yes, we have books. And usually when I come on this show, I bring, like, a lots of other stuff and not even the books. But we've got some books. We've got some other accoutrements, and it's all fun. Well, I like your explanation. You brought a lot of socks. So let's start with the socks. <laughs> okay. And as you said, you know, you just put on your comfy socks, and you sit and read a book. And I'm going, you know, that makes a lot of sense. Keep your feet warm. And you got your comfy right. socks on. Every once in a while, you can peer over your book and see your feet. You can wiggle your toes and, you know, enjoy right. your socks. And so Hans is going to zoom in on socks this morning. There are a whole uh, bunch of them. You want me to hold them? You lay them right up here? Okay. So here's like oh. our yoga socks. And this is like our cool camping socks with axes and bears. Yeah, so and... We'll Things of that nature. And we've got cat socks, of course, and some and, dinosaur socks. And here are some uh, fox socks, or are they cat socks? Those are cats. Oh, they're cats. Well, anyway. <laughs> and I, think, I think this pair here, i got to show up this pair. This is my favorite pair here because it's got a dinosaur. That's right, so, the dinosaur socks. So that's socks. a cool one here. So. And, you know, some are really pretty. I paired some socks with books here. Like here's some science socks with the science books. And I paired another pair of cat socks with the dog book. Look at that pair. You Those got are like pretty, a, right? You got like a whole, you know, whole world here on your socks. So, so you know, if you're, yeah, like, I think that's great. So, if you were reading, what book would you read with this one? Oh, I think that would be like, like a Quixote travel or, or an adventure. Yeah. That kind of looks like Don Quixote or yeah, something to me. So, yeah, you, so you, could, you could definitely do that. And then, so you know, when you're you're reading your book and you want to dwell uh, and kind of ponder, you look down at your socks. There you go. Or, you know, even better, if you're reading with somebody else, they wear the socks for your book and you wear right. the socks for their book. Or you don't know what to read, you look down at your socks and you get inspired. Absolutely. Like Paris. You can go to Paris with socks. There you go. So, there uh, you go. And it's Sunday, so I brought... Oh, wait, well, yeah. I brought the, have the gridiron the, uh, socks you here. Absolutely. <laughs> so, definitely have those. We've so. got it all. So they're men and women's and they're... Full um, knee length, their crew socks too. I mean, we we just got a lot in, so we're at full selection right now. Absolutely. Why is there an S on that? It's kind of funny. Anyway, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, so that that's cool. So you have tons of socks. We have, <laughs> we have <laughs> lots of socks. That all, you know, it's funny. Bookstores over the years, you know, it used to be you walked in a bookstore and it was all books. It was like shelves over your head. Right. It was a little dusty. You had the ladders and everything. And it was all books. But bookstores to survive today, they have to um, branch out a little. So hence the socks, hence the little tote bags and the water bottles and um, different fun things that we add to the mix to make it um, to make it enjoyable when you come shop. So it's kind of a one-stop shop. I mean, we have cards there mm -hmm. and everything like that. And, uh, you know, so a lot of times, and to top it all off, it's, it's an enjoyable experience because it's relaxing. Well, that's what it should be, too. You know, when you go in there and you enjoy, I mean, of course, the building itself, it's a beautiful building. It is a very and, nice uh, building. And so being able just to go in and enjoy the building and the woodwork and, and everything else, and then you get to look at the books and go upstairs. Right. And, and you've got comfy seats to sit in. Right, yeah, like you talk about yeah. that. The old days of bookstores, there were no chairs. No. You never had a chair. <laughs> there in the you, you went in and you, I don't even know if you talk to people. But anyway, um, we talk. And that's the other thing is like we read a ton. And we've got a lot of books. I mean, anybody comes in and they say, what do you want to read next? Or um, I just read this. What should I read next? Or what's the hot thing? I mean, we're there. We're all big readers. Yeah. And so, so we have... Or if the person, you know, it's like, I'm just browsing. It's like, please have at it. The place is meant to be browsed. Absolutely. And to spend some time there and everything. But I do want to talk about one upcoming event. And I, I see, oh, there we go. He's got this. Um, this book is called The One in a Million Boy. 
and this is the community read oh, okay. that all the libraries, I mean, I think we're talking like from Bartlett all the way down to Ossipee over to Bridgeton. Um, all the libraries have been focusing on this book and the bookstore too for the last two months. And Monica Wood is coming on Thursday um, to discuss it. She's going to be at Kennett, 7 o'clock. It's a free program. If you've read the book, fantastic. If you haven't come and listened to her, it's our 12th year of doing this with wow, the libraries. And um, it's a great book. It's about a 104-year-old woman and, um, you know, kind of her history. She's an immigrant. She's, she's lived all that time, but she, it's also about a young boy um, and his kind of fractured family, his father, who's not such a great dad, but who gets better and things of that nature. So it's a great, it's, that's why we pick these books because there's so much going on in them. Yeah. So there's a lots of ways for different people to get in and discuss it. And that's what happens. And this is the big finale on Thursday. So we really encourage people to come. Well, that's great. So that's coming up th this Thursday. So, but uh, like you say, if you haven't had a chance to read it, you can still go and you can, you can still go. We'll have books there that we can sell, and you can talk to Monica and get them signed. It's not a quiz. It's not a test. <laughs> Nobody has to you know, raise their hand and, and answer questions. So um, she is amazing. She's wonderful. She's funny. Um, and she's just, it's a great night um, to listen to her. And if you want to go out to dinner beforehand, uh, Black Cap is doing a wonderful dine to donate for us. Oh, um, terrific before then and uh, so because the One Book One Valley is funded by donations and grants throughout yeah. the year and uh, um, we can always use some more because that helps us bring our author for next year. Oh that's great, that's great. And then you have, uh, you have a bunch of other books here and that's one of the things too like you said um, the fine folks there at White Birch, Birch Books are knowledgeable because sometimes you come in and you're like I don't know what kind of book I right. want to read and being able to kind of steer it is kind of a, you know just right. going by the New York Times bestsellers doesn't always apply to everybody. It doesn't always apply, and and I should qualify here that the other thing is that we're not an algorithm. We're not going to treat you like you know you know ten thousand other people have read this book, so you right. should read this book next. I mean we're not computers, and so when you talk to us and tell us what what you've read, we can say well what did you like? What part was it? And, you know did you like the sciency part of it? Did you like the romance? Did you like the fact that there's this giant epic saga or whatever? And, you know, that helps us narrow down and give them what they might want to read next. And we try our best to read all across the board from memoirs and nonfiction um, down to the kids' books, the middle grades, and the young adults. And, in fact, it's funny. We have the gentleman who works at the store, and he reads all the best history books. But he won't put notes on them because he's like, history sells itself. <laughs> and, uh, but, but if you ask him about anything, he can tell you so eloquently about, like, there's a new Da Vinci book. There's a new book on Grant. There's these great big histories that are coming out right yeah. now that are so good. And he's read them. And, um, you know, it, it's just like, we're there if you want us. And, if again, if you just want to browse or you know what you want, I mean, we're there for that, too. That's awesome. Yeah. That's exactly what you want. So let's talk about some of these books you have here. Why did you choose some of these books? Well, okay, we talked about the Monica Wood. The other book right here, front and center, I think I can just leave it like yep. that, um, Lincoln and the Bardo, that just won the Booker Prize. That was just announced this last week. And um, it's an amazing book. I had not read George Saunders before. I read this one. It's the, in essence, it's the story about um, Abraham Lincoln when his son dies and that he goes to visit him in the cemetery. But what he did is he populated the cemetery with all these souls from years past who have not yet moved on. And so you get all these stories. At the same time, you get a little bit of like what is being talked about Lincoln right then mm -hmm. and everything. So it's, it's so different and it was so amazing, and um, I'm not usually an award winner reader, because <laughs> some of those, I, I finish them, and I'm like, oh, I wasn't smart enough to right. read that. <laughs> but, but this book, as, um, you know, I like popular fiction, and this fit right in, but yet it was, there was so much going on. It was fantastic. So that's why. Oh, that's great. Um, I brought that one. And then you were looking through this earlier. I was, because this one is, uh, I'm going to 
put that right in front yeah. so that Hans can zoom in on it. Right. Uh, Harry Potter, A Journey Through a History of Magic. And really cool illustrations and uh, information about the world of the magic. The world of magic. This just came out. I think we put it on the shelves on Friday. It, you know, whenever anything Harry Potter comes in, it's like... You know, you, you must not show anyone the box. You must keep it hidden. It's like <laughs> under lock and key. And then on the day you're allowed to put it out, you know, I, I, I always wonder, you know, I feel like there's some magic to do with it. But we just got these, and we do think these are going to be a big, fun book for the holidays. Yep. And, um, and we are well stocked with it. And it's just, it's full. It's something that the British Library is, our, um, Museum and... Um, Anyway, it's just it's just another piece of Harry Potter. It's so you know, Harry Potter, the final book came out years ago, but I still find it very hard to let it go. Yeah. Um, it was such a wonderful world and a place. And even though many people have already read the whole series, there are still there are still people out there who have yet to read it. Right. If you can believe it. And young people and <laughs> well the the thing is, and we've talked about Harry Potter, I mean we could spend a lot of time on that. And the thing is is that that it wasn't that she created this character and a few people. She created a world. And An the interconnections world. of the world. Right. And, and it's kind of like, oh, well, what do you do about light switches? She knew what light right. switches were. And that's, that's the most amazing thing about it. It wasn't right. finite. It was infinite. And, and that's what she, she's done that in her other books that she's written outside of that, where she creates these characters that literally... I always feel when I finish reading her books that, like, I could see that character on the street. <laughs> I know them, you know, completely from head to toe, what they'd be wearing, what they'd look like, and, and their weird personality traits and everything. And she does that somehow, um, you know, like you said, it's Harry, Hermione, and Ron. But beyond that, it's this entire huge cast of characters in this world. So she... She's got something amazing going yeah, on. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. All right, so, so we've got uh, this one I haven't looked at, but I think would probably uh, interest me, Hubble's Universe. Right. Well, this is the time of year. I mean, what what are we at? We're towards the end of October. Oh, tilted forward. Um, and, uh, you know, this is the time of the year, where what's called the fourth quarter, when they start coming out with these big, beautiful books. And yeah. so this is... Hubble's universe, and it's got amazing pictures in there about what you can see from the Hubble, um, what is it, a Hubble satellite? Is that what yeah. it is? Um, and, you know, that's, you know, I brought that. I brought this great book on dogs. I brought um, Tom Brady. I brought this amazing, you know, book on books and things like that. These are the type of fun fourth quarter um, books that all come out, and of course this time of year, and I didn't bring any, but is the amazing cookbook season. Oh, yeah. Um, and so so these are what your, are your gift books and things of that nature, and um, they're all starting to come in, and they're all here, and now is pretty much when we're most stocked up with them. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, uh, I, I don't know who, who's this guy? Do we know who this guy is? <laughs> If you follow what's in this book, you will be him. Uh, wow. wow. That's a lot of pages, though, for me to read to be able to be. How about if I just go to the back and find uh, out how to be Tom Brady? I don't know if that's going to work, but uh, um, no, anyway. Be, I guess I can't be Tom Brady today. Oh, so wow. we have a lot of fun, and um, we read a lot of books, and we love to talk about them. And, uh, you know, we're open seven days a week. Uh, we're there, what is it, 9.30 to 6, Monday through Saturday. Sunday is 10 to 5. We're not open till 10 o'clock today. But, um, and, you know, we're online. Check us out on Facebook. We're constantly reviewing books on Facebook yeah. and uh, having a, a bit of a fun on there and things like that with our ridiculous videos. We have no shame. <laughs> in, in talking about books, we have no shame. <laughs> well, I think the other thing, too, is that I think, um, I imagine there are probably people now you know, especially young people who really have never been into a bookstore. You know, maybe they've right. been to a book section or been to some of the others, but going into White Birch, book, White Birch Books is a bookstore. It's a book experience. Right. And a lot of people haven't done that, or maybe they haven't done it in years because it's very right. easy to order online. Right. But there's something about going into a bookstore and being able to talk to people and look at, physically look at the books. I'm a, I'm a judge a book by the cover type oh, of person. Aren't we? Um, and 
but that's such a great experience. Being able right. to look at the cover and you know the texture, look at the size, look at the you know the quality of the paper. Um, it's hard to you know it's it's hard to order that right when it's just a commodity on a exactly. page. Well, we've been talking about this a lot about um, just shopping in general. That a lot of people are just pushing buttons, and so they're no longer having like a personal interaction or seeing product. You know, it like comes to their house, they say, ah, I don't like, it, and they send it back and everything, and. Certainly some people are doing that, but at the same time, some people who have been doing it are like, you know, I miss it. I miss talking to right. real people, seeing Feeling things, touching and, things, yeah. and um, you know, making relationships. And again, it's, it's one of those things, because some people definitely don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> And that's fine, you know, it's not like we're everybody who comes in, we're going to become best friends, and pen pals or anything, you know. You can be the anonymous shopper at the store, you can run in and just buy that one thing you want. But at the same time, if you come in regularly and we get to know you, then we can, t you know, it, it's, it is a relationship building. And I love to do that at, you know, so many shops in the Valley here. Um, allow that and and Absolutely, sometimes I yep. think we forget that and um, especially this time of year you know if everybody came in to the village and went to one of their local shops you know it makes a huge difference at the end of the day to keep our village the way it is Absolutely. and everything like that so so yeah you'll get me on my shift your shopping shop local all that other kind yeah. of stuff I could go on forever well that's great I mean uh, and definitely so how do you describe where you're located well, these days it helps out. We are, um, we're south of the park and we are across the street from TD, ba TD Bank and we are next door to Pinkham Real Estate. Their brand new building. Yes, it, we used to say like that closed old gas station, <laughs> yeah. but now we can say we're next door to Pinkham Real Estate, which is a beautiful new um, building and we're happy to have them as neighbors. Absolutely. Absolutely. So definitely you want to check out White Birch Books. And uh, if you haven't been there in a while, go in and just wander around, just walk around and uh, and check out all the different the different things. And, you know, I always like, you know, I look at the kids books and yes. and uh, just all the elements of right. uh, kids books that are so different than adult books. But. Right. And I would say we brought some, uh, I mean, I brought today some of these big coffee table books yep. and everything, but we also, we also just got a shipment, two shipments in of bargain price books. So it's not, you know, all high end giant coffee table books. Yep. We, we've got, um, we're overstocked right now in our kids with our picture books and um, in our regular fiction. And those cost, you know, anywhere from like four ninety nine, five ninety nine. dollars yep. um, And we've got used books and everything. So um, it is worth it to spend your time because I am always amazed people come up and I'm like, you really, you know, they sleuthed it out. They got the bargains. They got a great deal. And um, I love to see that because it meant they spent time and yeah. kind of tinkered around in the corners and things like that. Yeah. And, so. you know, any good book is, uh, you know, there, there to last. You can exactly. go back to it and revisit it. Well, Laura, thanks so much. Well, thank for you. For coming by. Thanks for You're having me. You're on White Birch Books Corner on a, on a Sunday, the Sunday edition. The Sunday, I know. Of uh, so White different. Birch Books Corner. So, uh, so definitely check out White Birch White Birch. White Birch Books I know. right there in the uh, heart of North Conway Village. And uh, we'll see you, you another month. Absolutely. <laughs> Back here in a minute on White Mountains Today. <laughs>